Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters. Tonight, we are going to make history. And with me, I have Astronomy Live. How is it going, good sir? It's going fantastic. I'm smiling ear to ear right now. And that's because the weather is looking up for us, huh? At least for the moment. It's just got to hold out for the next 10 minutes or so, and I'm golden. All right, guys. What you are seeing on your screen right now is the star in question. Astronomy Live, would you like to explain uh, what star we're looking at? Sure. This is Wolf 359. It's the star that my mouse cursor is pointing at right in the center of the camera. I'm using an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. This is a Mead LX200 Classic. Uh, the camera is an S-Big ST2000 XCM which is actively cooled right now to negative 5 degrees Celsius, and it's attached to an S-Big A07 adaptive optics unit, which is rapidly guiding on a star to keep the view perfectly steady and even compensate to some degree for the effects of the atmosphere. So we're getting very nice sharp images here of Wolf 359 using 60 second exposures, and we will be able to compare these to images taken, or at least an image taken, by the New Horizons probe exactly at midnight eastern time four hours universal time just minutes from now so guys this is going to be a parallax measurement between what we are seeing right now and an image of the same star taken by the new horizon spacecraft and if i if i remember correctly this is the first time that something like this has been done you know pure parallax measurements using ground-based observations and an observation from a craft beyond the orbit of Pluto or anywhere else for that matter. That's correct as far as I know. And um, the New Horizons website talks about this, this program and says it will provide a first-ever demonstration of large and pure stellar parallax, meaning there's no involvement here of the proper motion of the star relative to our solar system because if you measure the parallax of a close-by star as Earth goes around the Sun, that solar system will, generally speaking, move differently through the galaxy than we do a little bit. And so there's two motions that are superimposed on each other. There's proper motion and there's parallax. And the combined motions oftentimes will form sort of a sine wave motion of the star relative to more distant background stars. We're not going to have to deal with any of that tonight because we're going to have simultaneous pictures taken at the same moment in time from two different perspectives that are separated by more than 40 astronomical units. Uh, New Horizons is currently almost 40, I wanna say it's close to 47 astronomical units away from Earth right now. And it's, it's about 47 astronomical units away from the sun. And so we will have two perspectives that are more widely separated by many times than you could even get with Earth's motion going around the sun. And so Wolf 359 was chosen because it is one of the closer solar systems to our solar system. It's one of the closer stars to our solar system. It is about seven light years away off the top of my head, if I remember right. Uh, and so it should show quite significant parallax when you're comparing two perspectives that are not uh, separated by just the diameter of Earth's orbit, by, but separated by uh, about 20 times that diameter or more. Um, so that will be fantastic. It should be very easy to see the amount of parallax between uh, the star's position from Earth and the star's position from New Horizons. New Horizons field of view, if I understand correctly, and, and on their site, I haven't found where they specifically say what the field of view is, but I suspect if they're going to be using their uh, long range imaging uh, system that they have on the probe, the field of view will probably be similar to the finder chart they show for the star which is a bounding box that is about like yay by yay and then comes up this way and goes across like this. So imagine a box that is most, uh, say maybe 50% uh, of this view right here. So they're going to have a very close up view. I'm going to have a close up view. Uh, the image scale here is about at one and a half arc seconds or so, give or take a tenth or two of an arc second per pixel. So we're looking here with a pretty pretty close up field of view. I do have the focal reducer on there. Uh, it's a 0.65 focal reducer. So the effective focal length here is whatever 2000 times 0.65 is. It's, it's, pretty, it's still pretty high. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who uh, are 
just want this number. I'll go ahead and give that to you right now. New Horizons is currently 6.6 .6 billion kilometers away. That is 4.1 billion miles. So that so that distance is going to act as the baseline for the triangle that we are making to get parallax measurements. Um, we are going to be following, or I should say the team behind this observation for New Horizons, as well as us, I guess. We're going to be following the same uh, method for figuring out distance as we did last time we did a, a transit observation with uh, myself and Astronomy Live with the International Space Station. So when the space station transited the moon, I was in one location and Astronomy Live was in a different location. We were a little over a kilometer apart. That kilometer uh, was the baseline for our triangle. And because we had that baseline, the ISS appeared to transit over a different part of the moon, whether you were looking at my video or Astronomy Live's video. Because the moon is a known angular size in the sky, we were able to compare the span of our two tracks with the angular size of the moon. With that, we were able to get parallax measurements. Uh, instead of using the moon as a background, we're using other stars for the background for this star that is a lot closer to us. So you would see a shift, a very dramatic shift between our image and the image that we will get from New Horizons. And based on that, based on its position relative to the background stars, we will be able to get parallax measurements where we can figure out the distance to this star. That's right. Um, and I'm also taking pictures of the telescope itself as it's taking these pictures. That's that's meta for you. I'm using my... Uh, <laughs> I'm using my Google Pixel right now to take some long exposure shots of of the telescope while it takes these historic photos because this to me is cool to participate in a historic moment where we're using a space probe that is leaving our solar system to measure the parallax of a relatively close by star with ground based telescopes uh, that even an amateur can afford. I mean that is really really cool. So um, I, I'm just I'm tickled absolutely thrilled that the weather actually panned out. The forecast was not supposed to be, knock on wood, this good. It was supposed to be pretty cloudy tonight here, but it is clear um, and everything's running great. So we've got about seven minutes now until New Horizons takes the picture. Oh, wow. I'm also uh, taking a look at their, uh, at their uh, release on January 29th, 2020. Uh, they say the images are going to be uh, of two different stars. There's going to be Proxima Centauri and Wolf 359, and we are looking at Wolf 359. That's right. So they, they picked two stars to be able to give um, the ability for people in both the northern and southern hemispheres to participate. And you'll notice also they take, I believe they take both stars at two times. Um, yes, there are two dates and times for each star. So Wolf 359 is being taken, um, the first photo they're gonna take of Wolf 359, which I believe is the um, second photo of this whole campaign. They've already taken one photo of Proxima Centauri earlier today or yesterday, depending on your time zone. And then this is gonna be the first of the Northern Hemisphere stars to get a, a picture, the only Northern Hemisphere star to get a picture taken um, at in just a couple minutes. And then uh, they, they're gonna take another picture of Wolf 359 six hours from now so that gives a chance for people on the other side of the world uh where it's not necessarily dark enough right now to do this the chance to participate so they're, they're really trying to spread things out and give you both a northern and southern hemisphere star and two times on each of those stars so that everyone around the world has a chance at least one opportunity uh to to participate here yeah it says uh uh new horizons uh two target stars can be observed by anyone with a camera equipped six inch or larger telescope. Once New Horizons sends its image to Earth, the mission team will provide them for comparison to images obtained with amateur telescopes. Wolf 359 and Proxima Centauri will appear to shift in position between the Earth-based and space-based images. So it's nice that they're including that 
term in their uh, briefing amateur based telescopes cuz you have some pr- you have a serious a serious piece of kit don't get me wrong but th- yours is still considered amateur correct absolutely and so the I mean, fact it's... that they're including amateur telescopes that that phrasing in their briefing means that they're thinking of you at the exact same time ain't that lovely it is nice it is nice you do need a, a telescope you can't see the star by eye to give you some perspective here this bright star down in the corner which is unrelated I, I don't know the designation off the top of my head but i did look this one up this bright star here is magnitude nine that's significantly dimmer than anything you can see by eye mm-hmm. nothing nothing you see in this entire view right here is visible to the naked eye it looks like a black little piece of sky to the naked eye it's only with the optics of the telescope that we can see any of this and of course the CCD is much more sensitive than our eyes so it can see wolf 359 itself which i believe is a magnitude well i, I don't know i'm not i'm gonna, not going to try to quote it off the top of my head here but i want to say it's it's dimmer than 12 so um, it's it's not really easy if even possible to see the star in the eyepiece with just my eyeball uh, I'm not sure that my eye would pick it up, especially since it's a reddish star. It's a, a spectral class M. So this is, or I believe it's a red dwarf star. So it probably wouldn't show up to my eye very well at all. Um, and so it's only with the power of this camera taking 60 second exposures that we can do this. And just to give you an update on time, we're now three minutes from the time that New Horizons will take its picture. I'm just going to reset my... Uh, camera taking photos of the rig here one more time to take one picture as this historic moment happens this is history in the making and it's history in the making with amateur astronomers that's something that was mentioned in the uh in the uh release on january on january 29th 2020 which is absolutely amazing i love that and i love being a part of this this is great because getting uh, we're actually getting a glimpse into the scale of our nearby neighbors and then we're able to use that scale to figure out the rest from there it's just it's just amazing how you can get some insight into the scale that we're talking about here i love i, I love doing i love doing measurements like this it's amazing yes yes and i I've been wanting to do parallax measurements for a while now, especially with the adaptive optics system that I've got on this camera now, but uh, just hadn't gotten around to it. This is the perfect opportunity. So this will be my first time actually measuring stellar parallax with my own personal telescope. Yeah. Um, That's going to be amazing. Now, to be clear, this star, we did not, we did not choose. This star was chosen by the uh, New Horizons team, correct? Yes, absolutely. This was all planned well in advance by New Horizons. Like I said, they deliberately picked a star that's close to Earth so it's easy to measure the parallax Mm -hmm. and a star that's in the northern hemisphere and one that's in the southern hemisphere. uh, And like I said, two different times to give everyone around the world basically a a chance to do this. Exactly. I I, I just want to point this out. Uh, We're not responsible for the planning of this. We're just following the lead of the New Horizons team. And with that, we are very close to making history right now. We're about 30 seconds away from midnight. Excellent. This is awesome. So it's still taking images right now. We'll be taking images simultaneously with the probe. And just to be clear, like I said, anyone around the world can participate. So anyone who, you know, might think that this is some sort of conspiracy or something, you had your chance. This was all public knowledge. I, I talked about this on one of my earlier live streams. Hey, astronomy. Five, yep. four... Here we go. Three, two, one. Midnight. Perfect. So they should be opening their shutter now and taking their exposure. We're taking a new picture right now. Shutter's opening up on the camera, and we are exposing. So we are exposing light now at the exact same time as the New Horizons probe. Awesome. I get chills. I got chills. Yeah, because we're doing the same thing as a spacecraft that's 6.6 billion kilometers away right now. Amazing. Just amazing. And to know that we're, we're pointed in the same direction in space that they are taking pictures of the same star, but that star's place is going to 
look displaced relative to the background stars when we compare the photos afterwards. Yeah, we're talking about a parallax measurement with a baseline of 6.6 .6 billion kilometers. Again, this is the same method that uh, we used when measuring the altitude of the International Space Station, where we used a parallax measurement using the uh, size of the moon for reference. This yeah. is using the same exact methodology. Yep, yep. And we're coming to a close on that exposure. Shutter's closed, downloading image. I think we just made history. There it is, coming in now. Boom, there it is. Okay, that's the new exposure that was taken at the exact same moment as the New Horizons probe. And I don't know how long their exposure is going to be. They might be taking an exposure that lasts several minutes, not just one minute. Um, I'm running one-minute exposures, and we can stack afterwards. That's what we're going to do. But uh, we definitely captured it at the same time as the New Horizons probe. So now, even if clouds come over or whatever, it's fine. We've got the images, and I've got 21 additional images that preceded that um, that we can also add to the stack to improve the uh, signal-to-noise ratio and make a clean image. So we are golden uh, we're going to keep imaging here. I'm going to keep imaging for as long as I can. But uh, we've got what we came for. We got it. We got the data. That's right. Wow, it's amazing how the weather decided to uh, kind of, you know, not suck tonight. I, I tell you what, and I have the scope polar aligned and everything. I was nervous about that because when I, when I got home tonight and I looked at the time, it was about uh, a little after 10 o'clock. And I knew I'd need to start setting up about now to get this picture. And I looked to the north, and I couldn't see the North Star. There was a bank of clouds that was just sitting on the North Star. And I'm thinking, oh, no, how am I going to polar align without my North Star? I rely on that for my iterative polar alignment. Um, mm -hmm. I can align the telescope altitude azimuth, but then you have field rotation. It's the same effect that causes the moon appear to tilt over the course of the night. And that will happen to your images over the course of the night. The, the images will actually rotate. So even if you're tracking very, very accurately, the whole field of view appears to rotate like you're looking down inside a washing machine or something. So you blur all the, all the other stars. Um, fortunately, that ended up not happening. When I set up the scope, the clouds moved off just enough that I could see the North Star peeking over the clouds. And I quickly got on it and got it polar aligned before the clouds could cover it up again. The, Clouds to the north lately, in the last couple of webcasts I've done, actually, it's been, that's where the trouble area has been, to the north. Mm -hmm. um, so, fortunately, I lucked out on the weather. The North Star uh, showed itself just in time for me to be able to quickly polar align the scope. And so now it is properly polar aligned, no field rotation, um, which is also good because as I, as I realized after the fact, I was going to be toast if I couldn't polar align because the star's altitude over the horizon was going to be uh, above 60 degrees. And I mean, the way so I have that, that's what some people don't seem to understand. Sometimes it's not about being good. It's about being lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of both involved here, unfortunately. So, yeah, there's a little bit of luck. We're not denying skills. your skills. We're not denying your skills. You definitely know what you're talking about. Um, but sometimes you just have to be lucky, and that's what it is. I do want to uh, read something one more time. Uh, once New Horizons sends its images to Earth, the mission team will provide them for comparison to images obtained with amateur telescopes. Amateur telescopes like the one we are using right now. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, people watching the stream, the thing I'd, I'd like to be able to do is once we get the image, images uh, processed tonight, I'm going to stack the images. And the final stacked image, um, Red, you can share it out on Twitter. And then people can tweet at uh, the New Horizons team on Twitter and let them know that, hey, we got an image. We got an image at the exact same time the probe did. Uh, so if they want to use this, I'm happy with the, the team, their team using this for any PR purposes or whatever. I'm sure other amateurs will be sending in their images too. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, if we all retweet this at them, they might be able to, they might be able to catch the fact that uh, we got it. We not only got it, we also live streamed us capturing it. I would very much like to be on a campaign of tweeting at New Horizons uh, our image so that they could use our image for their measurements. That would be amazing. Also, for uh, those of you who are wondering, um, or those of you who don't know, um, New Horizons is the spacecraft that was sent to Pluto to capture the first ever images of Pluto. It did a, a flyby 
of the dwarf planet, which some people argue is still a planet. It isn't. You, you, you just got to get over yourself. I'm sorry. Pluto is no longer a planet. But New Horizons was the craft that did a flyby of Pluto to bring us those, uh, those images. And now the craft is being used to get the uh, images of this star, which we will then compare with our images to get a parallax measurement. Ah. So, Red, I just sent you a uh, photo here on the hang or on Google Hangouts from my phone. Uh, the photo I took of the rig at the same moment that it was taking the the midnight picture, uh, the one that was timed to the same time as uh, New Horizons. So, I just sent you that long exposure photo showing the rig at the historic moment of our parallax measurement. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Share that on the stream. I am showing that right now. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That is absolutely gorgeous. This this picture right here, ladies and gentlemen, this picture right here, this picture was taken at the moment that history was made. That's, that's just amazing. I love it. <laughs> uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this image... That you just sent me the thumbnail for this live stream sounds good man sounds good and i know i know it's portrait but you know what the telescope's kind of long so I, I i deliberately did that that wasn't a you know typical cell phone goof, goof oopsie that was a deliberate artistic decision i guess to capture as much of the telescope as possible with the sky above it <laughs> it's good we can work with it we have ways of working with it let me go. Yeah, it's also pretty pretty high resolution. Did it did it come through at full resolution for you on your end? Absolutely. Good, good. All right, that's good to know. Wow, this is this is something right here. I I, I love I love it when science is, is done and it's and everything just works out. The weather's cooperating with us. New Horizons has taken its image. We have a rig that can make these uh, observations in the first place. And we have you, of course, a guy who kind of knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm so. Oh gosh, I'm so happy to be doing this. This is actually this campaign marked the first time I actually took a picture of Wolf three five nine. And the Star Trek nerd in me always wanted to be able to have a telescope to take a picture of Wolf three five nine. As geeky and as nerdy as that sounds, ever since high school, ever since I saw. The best of both worlds, parts one and two, with Picard being assembled, Wolf 359 and all of that. I wanted a telescope to take a picture because I, I heard that that was a real star. I'm like, oh, I want to take a picture of that. And I, for, you know, in high school, I didn't have a telescope that could take a picture of that. And then years and years went by and I finally got this scope and the whole rig and all the, the rest of it. And it totally left my mind. I forgot about it. Then this campaign comes along and I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, Wolf 359. And here we are now. I'm not just taking a picture of it to fulfill my my nerdy desires it's actually fulfilling history it's oh, it's so cool it's 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 amazing um i'm going to explain this one more time but uh what's happening right now is that two separate images of the same star are being taken one on earth with astronomy lives telescope and the other far out in space by the New Horizon spacecraft. That craft, as of right now, is 6.6 .6 billion kilometers away. That's 4.1 billion miles. That's the spacecraft that flew past Pluto. Because they're so far away from each other, this star, which is much further away than New Horizons, is going to appear to shift its position uh, when looking at our images compared to looking at the images from New Horizons. So we're going to see the star in a certain position in the sky with our images. New Horizons is going to see it in a different position relative to the background stars. That shift can be used to get parallax measurements. And that's with a baseline of 6.6 .6 billion kilometers that's amazing yep. 
and uh, so the way we're gonna analyze these photos afterwards so obviously I'll be stacking the images tonight to make a stacked high quality picture just like the one that red you used for the thumbnail for this video initially when advertising the stream uh, that was taken as my contingency photo this weekend, this past weekend, when I did my live stream. I took a picture of Wolf 359 in case the weather didn't pan out, so I'd at least have something to go with. Um, now I don't need those photos. That That's not going to be used at all. But uh, that's what we used. It's the same, same telescope, same camera that took that picture. So we'll do the same sort of process where we stack those images, um, and we will compare that to the New Horizons image. I suspect they're probably going to take multiple exposures over some period of time as well and stack uh, those images to average out the noise, especially for a deep spacecraft because they've got to deal with a lot more radiation than my telescope has to deal with, and that has effects on the CCD. You can actually see some of the particles, some of the particles of radiation that strike the CCD will actually light up pixels randomly. Mm -hmm. So by taking multiple exposures, you can average out the random noise, and you can you can get rid of that. You can reject the random noise and keep the things that stay the same, namely the stars. So um, they'll probably do something like that. Uh, I'm going to take their raw da data and compare it to my raw data using astrometry. So much like I did with our ISS parallax measurement, whereas you use the moon as your reference point for the size of the image and all of that, I used the stars by letting the moon drift out of the field of view until the stars started to appear. As, as the moon got further away and as the moon's glare went away, I was able to start to see the stars in the telescope with the telescope frozen in place, having been shut off. And so I was able to I was able to take a picture of the stars and knowing the time difference between when that photo was taken and the ISS transit, I was able to work backwards to to, to calculate the exact coordinates of ISS during the transit. Yes. Here here, that's not even required. It doesn't need to be that that crazy or that uh, complicated. Because the stars are here. We can, all, we can all see the stars in the image. And so I can directly astrometrically solve the image. Um, so with astrometry done, I will have the coordinates of every pixel in the image. Every pixel in the image will be astrometrically determined. Um, and so I can point my mouse cursor at it and be able to tell exactly what coordinates each pixel corresponds to. I'll astrometrically solve the New Horizons picture in the exact same way. I'm not even going to trust their astrometry. I don't have to. Uh -huh. I can load it into my astrometry software and and solve for it myself. And then I'll have the pixels of the court and the coordinates of every pixel of their image. That's the most beautiful part about it. You can double check their work. Exactly. And then we can we can basically create um, we can draw circles and things on the image that are. Uh, determined where they're positioned in the image, not by the pixel coordinates of the image, but by the sky coordinates of the image, the right ascension and declination. Okay, And then we can take those overlays and bring them in from one image to the other. We can go both ways with it. I can draw an overlay of exactly where Wolf 359 is in my image, in SAO image DS9, save it based on the sky coordinates, not based on the pixels in the image but the actual celestial coordinates and then load that into their image and show an overlay of where the star appeared in my image i can do the reverse i can i can label where wolf 359 is in their image and label that based on the sky coordinates bring it into my image and overlay exactly where it appeared in their image onto my image and you'll be able to see the difference and yes. then i can draw a line between those points and directly measure how how far apart are they how much parallax did we detect? We can measure that value very precisely, and then we can measure the distance to the star. Yes. To be clear, guys, uh, this star is going to move relative to the background stars. That shift will be measurable. And when we get the images back from New Horizons, we will post our findings both on YouTube and also on Twitter so you guys can follow along. Yep. Oh, that's um, going to be amazing once we actually get that data back. Because the background stars, their the background stars, their position is known in the sky. And so yeah. you know that this star is in this certain position, you know this other star is in that certain position, and you if you see a shift between the two or in front of them, you can actually measure using those two other stars as a reference point. Yep. Exactly. Um I think the chat's also asking, Red, if you could post a link to, I guess, what 
probably what I was talking about there with the, the JPL Horizons. I don't know if you already did that, but if you could post a link to the article that JPL published about this uh, Parallax campaign in the chat there. Absolutely. I think they would like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, I was going to also uh, look up what the designation is of the Guide Star. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay, so... Um, ah, here's, guide... a, here's a good I illustration right here. Let me uh, show something real quick. Sure. So here is a good illustration of what's going to happen. So you have our ground-based observations right here, and you have New Horizons over here. And as you can see, they're both looking at the same star. But where it appears to be relative to the background has changed. That is parallax, and that's what we can measure. And uh, here is a, another diagram showing exactly what's going on with this measurement. This is so amazing. <laughs> this is really cool. I'm going to post this in the live chat as well as in the description so you guys can follow along there. Let me go cool. ahead and post this link in the live chat. Bear with me for a quick moment. Okay, it is now in the live chat. And we are back to looking at your screen. Awesome. So I put my mouse cursor back on Wolf 359. For anyone joining late, the mouse cursor is pointing directly at where Wolf 359 is in my image. And as we just discussed, it will be in a slightly different position for uh, New Horizons. Uh, I also want to let the chat know uh, and everyone know the guide star over here on the left, this is being imaged with a separate CCD chip that's built into the same camera, which is doing high speed guiding and providing the inputs for the adaptive optics, actually. So you deliberately want to pick as bright a star as possible so that you can run the adaptive optics as fast as possible to be able to make quick corrections to compensate for any tracking errors, as well as any, um, to some extent, uh, some of the atmospheric distortion that causes the star position to wobble a bit. So uh, this star is HD 94765. Its magnitude is 7.34, according to Sky Safari Pro. Now that's interesting because that is about the limit of what the human eye can see under dark skies, dark adapted vision, and a trained observer using averted vision to maximize their uh, ability to see very faint stars. That's about as dim a star as the human eye can see. And you can see here how quickly the CCD is detecting that. It's running 0.1 second exposures and detecting it just fine. Um, so that's how sensitive this camera is. It can easily see what our human vision can barely see. And uh, another thing that I'm going to be doing, guys, is I'm going to be posting a link to Astronomy Live's YouTube channel. Uh, if you guys have not subscribed to Astronomy Live, you're missing out. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been a it's been a busy month and and even just a busy couple of weeks, especially for me on my channel. Um, I just wrapped up an observation campaign of Comet Atlas, and uh, also while I was at it, also grabbed some images of an asteroid 1998 OR2, which is currently approaching Earth for a close approach this month, and uh, did a debunking video debunking various conspiracy claims that the asteroid could potentially hit Earth. Definitely is not going to hit Earth. Definitely not a risk to hit Earth um, based on just my own observations. Purely on my own observations. Not going off of anyone else's, whether amateur or professional. Uh, and publish that data, publish the orbital elements I determined uh, on my latest video so you can check that out. Had a good time doing that. And actually, it paid off tonight because uh, it gave me lots of practice over multiple nights of setting up the telescope, tearing it down, setting up the telescope, tearing it down, doing the polar alignment, redoing it, redoing it. I got really fast at it. I mean, I've had this scope for many years. I, I know how to work it, but having that much routine practice over the last couple of weeks primed me to be able to set the scope tonight in the fastest time I've ever done it for a polar alignment. I, I did the polar alignment from having nothing outside to having the scope fully running and polar aligned in 30 minutes. I've never done it that fast before. And what was the result? We made history. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
I am happy to death that we have these images. And um, like I said, I mean, even if the clouds came over now, it's not a problem. We have plenty of data uh, on the star from tonight now to, to go off of. But the more the merrier, the more images we take, uh, the, the higher quality the picture, the final picture will be. Um, you're, it's all about averaging. It's, it's, it's basically you're taking each pixel in the image, uh, you're averaging the results you got on that pixel over all the images you took. And so the average value will show whatever stays the same. If you have random fluctuations in noise or a piece of radiation, cosmic ray strikes the CCD and lights up a pixel for a frame or two, um, that will get averaged out. Uh, but what stays the same is generally the stars. Also, you do have some occasional hot pixels like this red pixel here, this green pixel here. Those tend to uh, sometimes stay. There is a dark frame subtracted to eliminate a lot of those, but I'm not averaging multiple dark frames like I should for the purposes of doing a live stream. It's better to just, it's easier to just take a single dark frame and just run with it for the live stream. So for you guys, I've, I've just done a single dark frame subtraction here. Um, that gets rid of most of those colorful pixels, but occasionally some will slip through the cracks like that, and you'll have those. But aside from that, it cleans up the noise on the image very nicely. So you can see the, the colorful sort of static that changes on each picture. Like that, that pattern, that background noise pattern changes out on each picture. That gets averaged out. So you end up with a very clean looking image uh, of just the stars, and then you can go with that. So that's why the more pictures you take, the better because the noise, the random noise contribution to the overall average goes down the more pictures you take. So yeah, we're just going to keep taking pictures here for now. And as long as everyone's happy, we'll just keep imaging this star. Yeah, I say we'll go ahead and keep imaging the star, but we'll go ahead and conclude the live stream. But before we do, uh, I want people to know that Astronomy Live definitely deserves a sub. Uh, he is the reason I was able to track the Falcon 9 today, um, or I should say yesterday, and I am extremely thankful that his software worked flawlessly. So, Astronomy Live, thank you very much. And uh, guys, his uh, the link to his channel will be in the description. And also it's being posted right now in the live chat. If you have not done so already, Go to his channel, hit subscribe, it's well worth it, believe me. But, Mr. Astronomy Live, tonight, you have made history. How does that make you feel? Oh, I'm, I'm thrilled. This is probably one of the top nights my telescope will ever have. This is, this is something I won't soon forget. It's, it's so simple, it's just a star, and yet, it's history making. And so... I'm, I'm going to remember this for a long time to come. It ranks right up there with Falcon Heavy. It ranks right up there with the uh, 2017 Total Eclipse. Um, really, really cool to be able to participate in this tonight. And thank you, Red, for having me on. Thank you for going out there today and, and filming the launch, honestly. I, I felt good knowing I'm, I'm there in spirit and my software is there operating, even if I'm not there. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool. You did a great job tracking that launch today. That looked like some beautiful footage on your uh, on your live stream yep the uh the uh high quality render will be uploaded sometime tomorrow guys so stay tuned for that and uh the data from this observation will be posted later both on youtube and on twitter so stay tuned for that and we will go from there but astronomy live thank you very much for being here and thank all of you guys for watching and with that i'm gonna say have a good night people have a good night Hey, Astronomy Live. Yeah. You just made history. Oh, that's weird, man. That's that's really freaking weird feeling. Um, 